channel so you might be able to see in the background we have a gloomy rainy day going on out there and every time I have a day like this it just makes me want to make soup because I love it and it's comforting but today we are going to show you how we make a soup that we don't often make because it takes a whole lot of time and it's a whole lot easier to just order it from a restaurant but we are going to show you how we make our French onion soup at home so that you could just enjoy it whenever you want to. So and right now, oh. Also, we always make soup on gloomy days and rainy days because it just warms our mouths up a little and it gets us warmed up from the cold if we've been out there too much and, and it. That's and, true. And you can always make it when whenever you want to. Yeah. Even when it's a hot day, we just make it when it's a gloomy day too. Right, and what is your favorite soup? My favorite soup is chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup, you love it. Okay, so let's get started. Here in our brazer, we have six tablespoons of butter. And as you can see, we got that nice and melted down there. Now you wanna get this to a point where it's kind of clarified, which means that all these bubbles and this foam that you see in here are sort of, sort of starting to evaporate. So we're almost to that point right now and we have our heat on medium high. And then we have our onions. Now, a couple of things about onions. What are you doing? You want to put them in? Go ahead, put them in. Oh, careful. Um, so a couple of things about our onions. We have two sweet Vidalia onions and four yellow onions because I like the um, I like the combination <laughs> of flavors. Let me forget what I was talking about. Okay, and to cut them, we're cutting them in like one fourth sections. And I always cut my onions for my French onion soup pole to pole because believe it or not, onions cook differently depending on the way that they're cut. Let mommy do this because this is hot. This is very hot, sweetheart, okay? I don't want you to get burned and it could pop up at you. That butter could pop up at you. We don't want that. It will burn you. Huh? Why are you so close? Well, because mommy is older than you, silly willy. Well, I'm 16. Yeah. Hold your horses, kid. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get these onions coated completely in our butter. Okay? So we're going to just move them around in here, and you're going to break them up because some of them are still kind of stuck together. All right, and this is the process that takes patience because you are going to be caramel caramelizing these onions. No, 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 we're not something that in. And we're also putting this in. Not yet, not yet. Hang so, on one second, sweetheart. So we are going to be caramelizing our onions and that takes time because you want to make sure that these are fully caramelized and that they're nice and soft so that you're not biting into a crisp onion in your soup. And that process is gonna take approximately two hours. Yeah, and also guys, do you wanna taste just a normal cold onion? I don't think you do. Oh, they make yummy. So, On a sandwich or a hamburger? On those, they're good, but with just plain, when you're eating Careful. it just plain with yeah. nothing. Yeah, I wouldn't that, suggest doing that. That doesn't taste good, so that's why we just want to get these all crushed up in here so nobody tasted these onions. Cause, raw. Cause we they, don't want raw onions in our soup, right? Yeah. No way, man. We want good onions. That's right. So we are going to let these do their thing. So as they're cooking, and I just flipped one out here, mm -hmm. as they are cooking, 
Ever, about every 15 minutes, we are going to want to just come over and stir them around a little bit, toss them, because you don't want them sticking to the bottom of your pan. Now, as you're cooking them, they might start forming little brown bits on the bottom of your pan, which is why we have our wine sitting here. We are going to be using three-fourths cup, no, 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 we don't need it yet. Three-fourths cup of Pinot Grigio. Now you're gonna to wanna to use a dry white wine. You can use Sauvignon Blanc, you can do uh, Pinot Grigio, you could do Chardonnay. We are using Pinot Grigio and we have three-fourths cup of that. Now, if you start to see some of those brown bits forming on the bottom of your, your pan, just add a splash in and scrape them off into your onions because you want all of that flavor to go back into your onions. So we are going to get these cooked up. It's gonna be almost two hours before we are back. And once they are caramelized, we will be back to show you what we do next. Yeah. Okay guys, so we're just checking in. These have now been cooking for about 30 minutes. And as you can see, they're starting to turn that caramel color. Now, because we are doing our onions in cast iron, they're probably gonna cook in half the time that it would take to do it in stainless steel. Um, so if you're using cast iron, you're most likely looking at one hour as opposed to two, but you just wanna keep an eye on them. I just wanted to show you when I'm talking about the brown bits at the bottom of the pan, you can see they're starting to form here. Now I've already been deglazing this with some um, wine because this has happened a couple of times already. But these brown bits, we are gonna use just a splash of our Pinot Grigio. We get it into the pot, into the uh, brazier, and then you just scrape those brown bits up. Can I try? Sure, carefully. So that is where all this delicious flavor lives on the bottom of your pot. And when you get that wine in there, which is obviously your liquid, it's going to release them from the bottom of the pan and then they're going to go into your onions, which is just going to further that depth of flavor in your, your soup. Excellent job, baby. So Skye almost has all of these brown bits scraped up off the bottom of the pan and back into those onions. So we're gonna just let these do their thing and cook down and then we will be back to show you what we do next when they're fully caramelized. Okay guys, we are back and we are now at the one hour mark and as you can see, our onions are caramelized absolutely perfectly. So we are going to be adding in two cloves of garlic that have been minced and you just wanna get that in your onions and tossed around in there and you'll cook it for about a minute. You just want it to be fragrant. Now you can also omit this if you don't like garlic in, in anything, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now our garlic has cooked down. These don't smell like bay leaves. No, they're bay leaves, baby. Okay, so we have our garlic in there. It's nice and fragrant. And we're just gonna add in the rest of our Pinot Grigio. Again, in total, we're only using three fourths cup of Pinot Grigio. I got the leaves. I got, I got the leaves. Okay. And you wanna just turn your heat up just slightly because you wanna get that alcohol to burn off just a little. So we're gonna bring this to a nice hard simmer here. I got the leaves. You leaves, got the leaves. Leaves. I got the leaves. So I got silly. the leaves. They don't smell very good. No. And I really like them. So you're funny. I'm a bullfine with two wings. I'm a bullfine with two wings. Are you singing to everybody? Okay, so our wine has now been simmering in there for about two minutes, and this is reduced by about half. So now we're going to add in the rest of our ingredients. Are you ready, babes? Of course. Okay, so first, let's do this. First, we have one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Oops, give it a moment. Which I will do. Well, mommy's going to do it. And then I okay, and then we have one teaspoon 
of better than bullion beef flavor. So for our soup, I like to use a combination of beef broth and chicken broth just to try to level out that flavor. But to add in a little extra beef, beef flavoring, we do the beef bouillon because it has that richer flavor in it than the broth does. Yeah. So you just need about a teaspoon. You got it in there, babes? We just need a... If you want a heartier beef flavor, you absolutely can use all beef broth and you might actually want to even add in some of the beef bouillon, but that's completely up to you. Yeah, come. This is, this is, you can definitely like just switch the soup off with, with doing different things but the sure. same thing. But, but if you don't want to, you can make it just like us. That's right. Totally. Because it's your soup. That's you make right. all good stuff. And you want it to taste Delicious. just the way you want it to taste, right? Yep. Okay, so we're ready for our time. Can you show me which one is the time? Yes, so we have two sprigs of fresh thyme. We're going to just drop that in. Then we have two bay leaves. Stick them in. Very good job. Okay, then we are going to do our broth. So we have four cups of beef broth. This, we're going to do this one first. It's very heavy, so let mommy help you with that. Careful, careful. <laughs> Okay, just be very careful. Okay, then we have one and I'll a half cups time. of chicken I'll broth. Okay, it. very carefully. Don't splash it in there. Gently. Oh my goodness gracious. Very good job. Okay. All right. Oh my goodness, you're a piece of work. Can I pour it? Okay, so we're going to stir that around very gently. Don't throw it out of our pot. Very good job. Okay. All right. So we are going to just get our spoon out of there. We're going to cover this up and leave our lid cracked here. And we are just going to simmer this for 45 minutes. Okay, guys. So our soup has now been simmering for 45 minutes. It smells amazing. And it is time for us to now take these bay leaves out and our thyme sprigs. I'm going to just fish these out of here. I've also preheated our oven to 450 degrees because we are going to be getting our bread sliced and we'll be getting that in the oven in a couple of seconds. But this is the point in time where you're going to want to salt and pepper to taste. I'll alert you to the fact that when you add in your cheese, um, on top of your soup, there is a salty flavor to your Gruyere cheese, so you might want to just not over salt your soup. Otherwise, then it's going to be a little bit too salty. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of salt here, and you just stir that all in. Okay, so I'll be right back to show you how we get our baguette ready to get it in the oven. Okay, guys, so our soup is now done. So we are going to show you how we prepare our baguette to get it in the oven so we can finish off our meal. So real quick, we use a French baguette and you just want to slice it so that it's like diagonal slices here. Now, because I'm making mine keto, I have a piece of my keto bread that I made in my bread machine. And if you want to um, see the recipe for that, we have that on our channel as well. I'll place a link in the description below so you can also use that if you want to have a keto version of this. So real quickly, we just buttered each piece of bread and we are going to just take a little bit of garlic powder and we're going to sprinkle that just gently, sprinkle it over each one of them. That's a lot. Okay, let me help you a little bit here. <laughs> that one's going to be very garlicky. That's okay though, because mommy loves garlic. Right. You all okay. got it. All right. So as I said before, Why we have our... I get to fill it in. Okay. That's good. All right. So as I said before, we have our oven preheated to 450 degrees. 
And then here we have our Gruyere cheese that's been um, freshly shredded. And we are going to sprinkle that, <coughs> excuse me, on top of each one of these. We're gonna do a lot on here because okay, that's good. We really want it to try be to keep it soup. on the bread though, because you don't want to lose that delicious cheese. Super pirouette. I don't know that you're gonna like that cheese. And don't, but don't spit it out in here. So. <laughs> Like it. Yeah, no kidding. Okay guys, so before we put our bread in the oven, I just want to show you really quickly. I love French onion soup, but I also think that the best part of it is that bread and that, that melty cheese. And usually once I'm through that, I'm kind of like over the soup a little. Um, so the way that I keep this delicious until the last bite is I actually put my soup in a shallow bowl and I use the same amount of soup, but I just have it spread out more. And then I use an extra piece of um, piece of bread or two extra pieces of bread, and this actually becomes a meal. But that way, I have that bread and cheese in every single bite, and it's absolutely delicious. Now, of course, we also have our traditional crock, and we're gonna be making that as well. So as soon as our bread comes out of the oven, we will get these assembled and we will show you what we do before we pop them under the broiler to finish them. Okay guys, so our bread is now nice and toasted and the cheese is nice and bubbly on that. So we're gonna just assemble this in our soup. Now I'm okay. just gonna, sure you can do, put one right next to it. Now you, if you're doing the shallow bowl version of this, you can certainly do like two to three pieces. So why don't you put that guy Guys, right over here. We're, we're not doing this with our hands because it's, it, cause it's super hot, but if it flips over on accident, then, then we can do it with this or we can do it with our hands. That's I right. just did it with my hands because I was that guy right on top of here. Because I was really very careful. Very careful. Okay, so if you're doing the, okay, that's good. If you're doing the regular crock version, you just stick that, leave that one there because mommy's going to make mine uh, with my keto bread later. Okay, so then we're going to take a little extra Gruyere cheese and we're going to put that over the top. Kind of want to make sure that you have a layer of that so it sort of falls into the soup. Just a little. Here we go. So as you can see, this shallow bowl version has a few extra pieces of bread. It's more like a meal. No, 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 that's enough. Put it on this one. Ooh. Sort of like a meal. All right, so we're gonna sprinkle. No, we're done, we're done, we're done. We have enough. We don't need to use it all. Okay, so we pop that on there and then we have our broiler on high and we're gonna just throw this right under the broiler. It's about six inches away from the heating element. And you're really only gonna need like one or two minutes. So you wanna keep a very close eye on this because it's gonna start bubbling and browning very quickly. And then it's ready to eat. So guys, we will be taking pictures of this and posting them at the end of the video. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe below so you gain access to all of our future videos. Thank you so much and have a great day.